Welcome back to Sous Vide Everything, guys. I just want you to hear these words. Bone marrow steak sandwich. Come on, come on. Here we have three beautiful canoe bone marrows. They call it canoe style because basically the bone has been splitted in half. But you can also use the round ones if these are not available. And let me tell you something, there's a reason why we call this the butter of the gods. Now to prepare it, it's very easy. The first thing I like to do is to create a brine so that I can remove all of the internal blood. All you have to do is to grab some water and sprinkle some salt right in it. The most important thing is to make sure that the salt is completely dissolved. Once that's done, I like to transfer the bone marrows to a deep container to ensure that every single one of them will be completely covered with the brine. Now is it necessary for you to brine the bones? I feel like it is because it's not only going to give you a better result in taste but also in looks. If you remove the brining aspect out of it, what happens is that your butter of the gods will be very very strong. So if you have the times, always let them brine overnight in your refrigerator. The very next day I took them out of the refrigerator, removed them from the brine and this is what they look like. As you can see, the brine did its job and it removed almost 90% of all of that blood. That should give the bone marrow an amazing flavor. I do recommend petting it dry because as you do that you will actually remove even more blood. If you're gonna be using your bone marrow to display it in a plate I definitely recommend cleaning out the bones. This is some tedious work that is actually not even worth doing it. But if you want a nice presentation go ahead and make it happen. Now here's a very important tip before roasting them. On a baking sheet I first like to lay down some aluminum foil then right on top a cooling rack. This does not only make the cleaning a lot easier but it also helps retain all of the bone marrow that will be falling out. Now let's talk about seasoning. I like to keep it very simple with a little bit of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper, garlic powder and smoked paprika. To me this is the perfect seasoning for bone marrow. Now all there's left to do is to cook it and for that I'm going to be using the broiler celery in my oven. You want to make sure that you set it as high as possible. Let me tell you something, this is what you're looking for. If your oven is like mine you will take no more than 10 minutes. As it's cooking and bubbling you can see this wonderful thing happening right in front of your eyes. And let me tell you something, it is mesmerizing. Once the 10 minutes were up, this is what I was left with. That, my friends, is the butter of the gods. And if you've never had it, oof, you don't know what you're missing. Now the only thing left to do is to sprinkle a little bit of parsley right on top because your bone marrow is done. That is as good as it gets. There's no one in the planet that will not enjoy this. Talking about bread, this is the one I'm gonna be using. I recommend trying to stay away from soft bread. Using a nice crusty bread like this actually gives your sandwich a little bit of integrity. If not, everything will be way too soft. As you can see, once I finish slicing it up, it has a nice crust. Now here's one of the reasons I use the aluminum foil. All of the bone marrow that fell off the bone is actually here and there's no way that we're gonna throw this away. So I like to grab all of my breads and rub it around. Around. Make sure every single one of them is nicely coated with the butter of the gods. The last thing we want is for this to go to waste. Once I was done, you can see that every single one of them is perfectly coated. That is exactly what you're looking for. Now the next thing to do is to toast them so that we can make an incredible sandwich. I just like to throw them in my toaster oven for about 2 minutes. And once the time was up, it was toasted to perfection. Now to balance out our bone marrow steak sandwich, I like to make a simple tomato sauce to go along with it. And this one is not only easy to make, but also very tasty. I first started out with these grape tomatoes. As you can see the interesting thing is that they come in a variety of colors. But for whatever reason if you cannot find these you can use any ones you like. Now here's a quick tip to slice them in half. If you have these lids from deli containers definitely save them. Here's how I like to use them. I throw them all in right on top, grab another lid and just slice them right in half just like this. As you can see it works like a charm. But if for whatever reason you don't have these lids you just gotta do one at a time. But now that we have them sliced in half the only thing have to do is to season our salad. And for that I threw in a little bit of purple onions, followed by a little bit of basil, parsley, balsamic vinegar, a good quality olive oil, black pepper and salt. Now all there's left to do is to mix it well and your tomato salad is done. As I mentioned before this is the perfect side for that bone marrow sandwich. To take the sandwich over the top I also made a very simple sauce. And here's how. As always remember exact amount of ingredients always in the description down below for you. I threw in a little bit of mayo followed by whole grain mustard. Mix it well and my sauce was ready. That is as easy as it gets. Now we all know this is not gonna be a steak sandwich without steak. And for today I'm gonna be using these two beautiful filet mignons. As you can see they actually have a good amount of marbling on them. That is definitely a plus on my book. To season them I kept it very simple. I threw in a little bit of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder, nothing else. And since a lot of people normally says that filet mignon lacks flavor that is just because they don't season it enough. So make sure you put plenty of seasoning. Now the only thing left to do is to bag them up, vacuum seal them and get them ready for the water bath. 
But now that we have the filet mignon ready, I wanted to find out if a cheaper cut of meat will actually do just as good. So I brought in the cheap stuff. I'm talking about ground beef. This one is actually 80-20. The first thing I did was to break it up just like this. Then I threw in the seasoning and to keep it exactly the same, I just did salt, freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder, nothing else. I mixed everything well to make sure everything was perfectly seasoned. Once that was done, I started forming my patties. I know it sounds funny, but hey, I'm trying to make it look like a filet mignon so that it can give a run for its money. But now the only thing left to do is to bag them up, vacuum seal them and get them ready for the water bath. As always, remember whenever you vacuum sealing ground beef to set it to its lowest setting. If not, it's just gonna squish the whole thing. But now that we have all of our proteins ready, all there's left to do is to cook them. And for that, I'm cooking the beautiful filet mignons at 131 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. The ground beef, however, I'm raising the temperature to 150, but only for one hour. And I honestly cannot wait to show you how this is gonna turn out. I got both of my beautiful steaks cooking. Yes, I'm gonna call the second one, the poor man version, a steak as well, because we're treating it as a steak, and I hope it's gonna be good also. We're gonna give you a fair review. But they are both ready, we are hungry, and it's time to take them out. Let's do it. Here we have our beautiful steaks, and they smell absolutely incredible, everybody. It is absolutely phenomenal. Every time it gets me, as soon as it gets out of the bag, you can smell and I can already tell that it's gonna be something really, really wonderful. Now, I know this is not a steak, but if you glance at it really quickly, it might fool a lot of people as a filet mignon. I'll tell you that right now, especially if you put one deer next to the other like this. Now, here's the plan. Always, whenever you're using sous vide, you gotta pet it dry before the searing. That will get you a nice, wonderful crust without overcooking the steak. If you don't pet it dry, it's not gonna be the same. You gotta first evaporate all that water that is on the surface in order to get a sear, and you're just basically gonna overdo it when you don't have to. Talking about doing it, you should definitely use some type of very hot, fast sear. I like to use my flamethrower. I use it all the time and I definitely recommend it. And if you don't have one, you should definitely get it because there's a lot of other uses for it. I even use it to like light up my charcoal and many other things. So now I say, I know it doesn't look that good right now, but watch this. Alright everybody, here we have our beautiful sandwiches momozin together with bone marrow. Oh my, the aka butter of the gods. That's right, absolutely amazing everybody. I cannot emphasize, if you've never had bone marrow, do yourself a favor, go get one today and give it a try. Mama already trying it? <laughs> Without bread and everything Mama? Uh, so good! <laughs> no bread needed? No bread needed. <laughs> so we have the poor man okay. versions. Okay. As you can see, it's a little bit more overcooked. Like Don't look at it too much. Meatball style? <laughs> <laughs> Meatloaf style? <laughs> Meatloaf style. And then we have filet mignon right here. Oh. Huh? <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. See, I treat you bad and then I treat you really yeah. good after. So the reason I did it with the meatloaf is just so that we'll find out how good this sandwich really is. You know okay. what I mean? Because bone marrow will make everything bad, everybody. Yeah, everything. Works. Okay, so let's go first with the... With the bone marrow? No, the no, meatloaf. No, meatloaf. Yes. <laughs> now, as always, Ooh, I like to make a nice thick boy. Yeah? Oh. I'm, I'm gonna let everything fall down. <laughs> the poor man version is first, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. That's a crusty bread. That's a crusty bread. <laughs> I love it. It's absolutely incredible. I'll have meatloaf like this any day. I know, right? It's not like meatloaf. Let's no, be honest. No, it's not. It's not like a steak is there, of course, and it's not like a hamburger either. It's kind of like a fancy, fancy sandwich. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Yeah. Now, we'll give you an advice. It definitely put a little bit of that extra bone marrow oh, in there, huh, Mama? This. Look at Mama. This is gonna take you to another level. 
<laughs> so here's the deal. You have to make the bread kind of crusty. You know what I mean? Because if not, it's going to be too soft for mm -hmm. the actual bone marrow. And then you have soft bread on top of soft meat. It's just going to be soggy. Soft bone marrow. No, you don't want that. No, you don't no. want that. All right, little bit extra. Cheers, everybody. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. Come on now. Wow. Come on now. We haven't even tried the filet mignon. Wow. <laughs> Is the bread like garlic bread, garlic butter on it? Yes, there's a little bit of garlic in there. The bone marrow brought out the flavor of the garlic more. Yeah, I agree. A hundred percent. Okay, this is phenomenal. Now to clean up that richness, because it is rich, we have a little salad right here. You definitely want that acidity from the balsamic vinegar in order to balance everything out. Mm -hmm. And these tomatoes are like grapes. It's so interesting. Yeah, so they're really sweet. Mm -hmm. And it balances really well with the balsamic. Little salad. Cheers, everybody. Wow. Mm. It's like a... It's a perfect combination. Mm. Absolutely perfect combination. It's a freshness explosion in your mouth. Yeah. Are you ready for the main event? I want to go to the main event because I want to finish this. <laughs> this is, I want to go back to the first one. because There's no good. way that the main event is not going to be amazing. Main event. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. This is next level shit right here. Holy cow. <laughs> wow. Now it's a steak sandwich. Now it's a steak sandwich. There you go, baby. I see you're going for more dip, Mama. Oh, yeah. Mama is going for more of that dip. And when you grab the very top of the bone marrow just like this, it has a lot of flavor because of all the spices. All right, Mama, you ready? That's where the good stuff is. I know. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. I'm enjoying this right now. Hold on. <laughs> Mama is in heaven, Mama. What oh, happened? Huh? That's what they call the butter of the gods because you go straight to heaven. Oh, my God. <laughs> You gotta make that bread really, really crusty. Yeah, you cannot make this soft. No, you Otherwise, make soft bread, like a bread, like a sandwich bread, this is just not gonna be the same. No. Anyway, guys, these are the results. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. We out. You good, mama? Putting some tomatoes in the Mama middle. Mama put tomato inside <laughs> of the sandwich. That is smart, everybody. Give it a try and definitely go get yourself some bone marrow today. Today. You will not regret it. You will thank me later. Take care, everybody.